Of all the video game developers in the world, non-court controversy quite like Rockstar. Going from fairly humble beginnings with the likes of Thrasher, Skate and Destroy and Earthworm Jim, the studio blew a hole in the side of the public consciousness with 1997's parent terrifying GTA. It goes without saying that this more than made Rockstar a force to be reckoned with, but as for how the various teams making up their studios actually operate, that's mostly remained shrouded in secrecy. Founders Sam and Dan Hauser aren't ones for public appearances, and simply down to Rockstar having so much cultural pull, they tend not to allocate that much money to advertising either. Everybody and their grandma will check out the next Rockstar game no matter what, and the team knows it. As such, they've built up a solid reputation for quality video games and innovative mechanics, GTA 3 literally changed the face of the industry and invented a genre, but outside of that, maintaining a level of autonomy away from the public eye has resulted in a number of stories being quashed. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 9 things Rockstar Games want you to forget. Number 9. Nico Bellic's voice actor feeling he was unfairly paid Imagine working on a Grand Theft Auto game post-GTA 3 and not knowing it was going to be a big deal. Such was the case for Nico Bellic's voice actor Michael Hollick, who despite being paid $1,050 per day for recording sessions across 2006 and 2007, once he noticed the game was soaring to heights of $600 million and beyond in revenue, he wanted more. Thus, he got in touch to renegotiate his contract with Rockstar, only to be completely ignored and cast aside. In fairness, this qualm sent us more on the Screen Actors Guild setting up a contract between the actor and a studio that didn't benefit the long term, but that didn't stop Rockstar being blamed for not adequately paying their actors, despite legally not doing anything wrong. Thankfully, everything regarding video game voice actors and how they work with studios has been completely overhauled this generation, but back then, it was everyone for themselves. The whole thing cumulated when MTV Multiplayer asked for comment on whether Hollick would be back in GTA 4's then-upcoming DLC packs, to which Rockstar responded with a pretty blunt, hell no. To somewhat add some salt to the wound, Rockstar used discarded clips from Michael's previous recording sessions to make a performance for Nico Bellic whenever he was going to appear, moving forward and neglecting to address the complaint ever again. Number 8. There was almost an internal mutiny over Manhunt one of the most relentlessly brutal and gory video games of all time, 2003's Manhunt felt like Rockstar saying, look, if you want a monster, we'll give you one. Following just how overblown the controversy surrounding GTA 3 and Vice City had become, what's more surprising is that the decision to make something so deliberately controversial and press goading was not a decision the entire team were on board with. Said the now ex-employee Jeff Williams, There was almost a mutiny at the company over that game. It just made us all feel icky. It was all about the violence and it was realistic violence. We all knew that there was no way we could explain it away in-game. There was no way to rationalize it. We were crossing a line. That line that Williams refers to is the sort of thing the likes of Postal or Hatred don't know how to walk very well, whereas with Rockstar at the helm, Manhunt became a tale of prey and predators, of slowly turning the tables on your oppressors one shaved plastic bag, strangulation, or shotgun blast at a time. I will always maintain that Manhunt is one of Rockstar's best games and one of the best dissections of power dynamics in gaming history. Number 7. When they stole Daz Dillinger's music for GTA 5 one of those underreported stories that ultimately fizzled out just due to the behemoth that is GTA and Rockstar thundering forward, rapper Daz Dillinger tried to kick up a stink about two of his songs, Seawalk and Nothing But The Cavi Hit, being used in GTA 5. He reported that Rockstar did approach him to use his music before launch, but offered him the quote-unquote offensively low $4,271 as a one-off payment, which he declined. The kicker was that GTA 5 still went ahead with these songs intact, as Dillinger claimed various fans had got in touch to tell him. This resulted in a cease and desist letter being sent to Rockstar, with the clause that if Daz wasn't paid more than the aforementioned initial sum, Rockstar should, and I quote, recall and destroy all copies of the game. That was about as far as it went though, as in a later interview, Daz mentioned that he was still waiting, letting his lawyers do the work. Assumedly, the parties settled out of court as Dillinger never followed up on the allegations again, and the songs have been removed from the game's full playlist. Number 6. Target refusing to stock GTA 5 because of violence against women there's nothing like a good old hyper-sensationalized media spin to whip everyone into a stupor. Of course, by the time we got to GTA 5, it was somewhat expected that the game would be the center of yet another won't someone think of the children style outrage, but Australia's target chains decided to get hung up on something else, an apparent focus on committing violent acts against women. 
Started by a Change.org petition that went all in, pleading to target that Rockstar's latest game, and I quote, encourages players to commit sexual violence and kill women, almost 50,000 people signed on, resulting in the retail chain themselves refusing to stock GTA 5 in the country. Being that GTA should always be thought of as a black mirror held up to society, outside of exclusively female prostitutes, there's clearly just as much propensity to commit violent acts against males, females, or anything in between. Target remains selling R-rated content such as movies and other games, yet potentially because of this exact petition, GTA 5 to this day is still a no-go. Number 5. Accidentally leaving a sex minigame in GTA San Andreas 2005 was the year when, after three years since GTA 3, the whole world was debating the various moralities and influences GTA could have on younger people. Seeing Rockstar in the firing line for everything from Manhunt's murder porn aesthetic to lawyer Jack Thompson making it his life's work to rid the world of their products. The hot coffee scandal then was the name given to Rockstar's coders, leaving a sex minigame in initial pressings of San Andreas' physical copies. PC modders dove into the code in 2005, uncovering lewd scenes of CJ getting it on with the game's array of females, thereby causing every major press outlet to compare San Andreas to pornography, despite many characters remaining clothed and the whole thing looking unfinished and ridiculous. The cultural response felt unprecedented for video games as San Andreas was pulled from Australian store shelves under governmental mandate as the US granted it an adults-only rating, the same as pornography. Rockstar promptly started printing versions of the game without the offensive material, reverting the game back to a solid 18 in the UK and mature in the US, but original copies are still out there, so chances are if you bought one back in 2004, your game will still have the hot coffee scenes intact. Number 4. Bullies controversy fueled name change in the UK Speaking of the mid-2000s, every game Rockstar looked to put out was viewed by the media as Satan's own private reserve. Bully was no different, and as antagonistic lawyer Jack Thompson was appearing on as many Talking Heads news segments as possible, the game quickly became misrepresented as something that encouraged bullying children. Naturally, the reality was the protagonist Jimmy Hopkins was not only the subject of bullying himself, but could save various other children from harm, a setup that did save Bully in the long run as it remains one of Rockstar's most well-written and best games of all time. Still, the press chose the sensationalized route, leading to the UK release having a completely different name, Canis Canum Edit, which is Latin for Dog Eat Dog. Over time, the general controversy would cool, mainly because all those who actually played Canis Canum Edit or Bully or whatever you want to call it, realized its playful representation of high school cliques was endearing and lovable, leading to the scholarship edition on Xbox 360 retaining the Bully name even in the UK. Number 3. Lindsay Lohan managing to sue for her likeness in GTA 5 Completely out of left field considering the sorts of allegations usually levied at Rockstar, Lindsay Lohan claimed that the character of Lacey Jonas was directly inspired by her actions and image. Though the quote-unquote character in question was nothing more than a random bikini-clad woman Rockstar had used in GTA 5's advertising, Lohan claimed all sorts of similarities from the likeness of clothing resembling Lohan's own fashion line to the beachside location being a dead ringer for the Chateau Marmont, a hotel where Lohan once stayed. Weirdly, this sort of court case should have been immediately discarded as Jonas is, if anything, a perfectly legal parody of Lohan, leading to Rockstar's parent company Take-Two to label the case as filed for publicity purposes. Still, it went ahead for a literal New York minute as a court judge then stated that works of fiction and satire do not fall within the narrow scope of the statutory phrases of advertising and trade, adding that this video game's unique story, characters, dialogue, and environment, combined with the player's ability to choose how to proceed in the game, render it a work of fiction and satire. Nice try, Lindsay, but better luck next time. Number 2. Manhunt's Association with a Real-Life Murder Possibly the culmination of mid-2000s video games or killing the youth horror-style clickbait, a copy of Manhunt was actually found in connection to the murder of Stefan Pakira by the killer whose name I'm just not gonna mention. This simple fact was all it took for Manhunt to be repeatedly blamed for the killing, only there was one key fact omitted from the initial, more reactionary reports. The copy of Manhunt belonged to the victim and not the killer. Not only that, but the motivation behind the killing was concluded to be related to robbery and the killer being under the influence of illegal substances, as the Leicestershire Constibulary ruled the investigation did not uncover any connections to the video game. Sadly, the full report came after Rockstar were forced to weather a storm of inaccuracy, alongside the fact that the victim's parents, Patrick and Giselle, had wasted time and money hiring the disbarred Jack Thompson to sue Sony and Rockstar for their supposed culpability in allowing Manhunt to be released. A huge mess for all involved, but one that would repeat only a few years later. Number 1. Rockstar vs. The Whole World Over Manhunt 2 Knowing that doing anything with the word manhunt in it would kick off a media storm of unknown proportions, Rockstar still steamed on ahead, again showing off a game that prioritized horrifically brutal murder scenes and rated your performance based on just how sadistic you could be. 
At least, that was the game in theory. That initial version of the game came up against a veritable storm of backlash and misrepresentation in the media. First up, lawyer Jack Thompson was again ready to leap into action, proclaiming that despite Manhunt being thoroughly removed from all association to the previously mentioned murder case, Take-Two were quote-unquote lying about how the crime went down. Following this initial salvo, Manhunt 2 was denied classification from both the BBFC and IFCO ratings boards, banning it in the UK as the ESRB once again gave it an adults-only rating in the US, meaning that just like the original, it could not be sold in the majority of high street stores. To actually get their work out the door, Rockstar altered many fundamental parts of Manhunt 2, removing the more brutal kills equals a higher score rating system and various decapitations and kill animations. This resulted in an 18 slash mature rating yet again, but Manhunt suffered critically as many of its newest features were now no more. And that is my list. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of Rockstar's antics over the years. I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast and I'll catch you soon.